Okay, this is going to be a test of how long I can hold my temper against the pro-lifers. I'm going to try and be slow and nice this time because I'm hoping this verse will make it very clear that you're not human until God creates your soul at birth just like Genesis 2, 7 says. Only this time the he is Jesus Christ himself at the moment of his birth. This word here, I said, komenos. My, when my pastor exegeted this verse, he made careful pains to say, at the moment when he comes. It's translated comes, and that's what I my means. See? If you have Bible works, what's nice about it is that you can just hover over the word. And this is the vocabulary form, ice erkomai, meaning to come in or into, to come into something. Now hopefully you understand that if it's coming in, that you weren't wherever you end up being. If you come into a room, you were not there before. You're only there once you get there. Alright? Now, hopefully you know that a pregnancy, generally speaking, lasts nine months. Okay? When you come in, that means you weren't there before. Big hint. When he comes into, comes into the world. See? I said, I said, menos. It should be trans. I should say ace. Okay, a uh, e, e means a e sound. Ace, ton, cosmon, lege. He said. He speaks. In other words, he's not him until he's born. He's not even in the world. See, this was the word for world. Because, honey, he can't speak in the womb. You don't speak in the womb. So he's coming the moment, this is the heiress, no, it's par present participle. Okay? Coming. I mean, the act of, that's where my pastor gets the meaning of at the moment. The act of coming into the world, he speaks the same moment. The same moment he exists for the first time in his humanity. He speaks. Humanity speaks. Okay? So that means whatever was in Mary's womb was not him. And in case you didn't get that, then he makes it even clearer when he says, A body you have prepared for me. Let me move the thing out of the way. A body you have, past tense. Okay, I better put it up again so you can see this word because it's going to be real important. Okay, there it is. Katartizo. Right here at the bottom. See? Katartizo. It's in the heiress. Now, the aorist precedes the present participle. The participle is an action occurring at that moment. The aorist precedes it, which is why the translators translated it. You have prepared. Have. See, that what you're seeing below on screen right now is Strong's, which I never use because it's too weak. There are a whole bunch of other lexicons that are used by scholars and pastors. This is Gingrich. This is Freiburg. The king among them is Bauer Danker right here. To cause to be in a condition, which I'm going to explain more about it in a minute. But what I'm trying to say is these are the real lexicons. Thayer is my most favorite. Because Thayer goes through how a word comes to exist. It's past. It's called etymology. It's really important in the Bible to know the etymology of a word. You have prepared. You have prepared. See, 
This is coming in now when he comes, present tense. Because he's now alive, he says, obviously from his deity, okay, a body you have, past tense, prepared for who? Me. Okay, then here's the word body, and that's the Greek word soma here, okay? That's it. The body is an it. Here's the word moi, means me, stative. Okay, well, this is soma, but this is me. And in between, katartizo, a body you prepared. Okay, so the body is not Christ. That's exactly what David says in Psalm 139, 16. And actually, his whole focus in Psalm 139 is, Golly, you went to all this trouble for nine months to prepare a body for me? Okay, the body is not you. That's why you're not evolved. God birthed you by your soul. Genesis 2-7, first the body is made, step one, step two, then it's out on the ground, step three, God breathes lives into it, You're, you get a soul life, Adam got soul and spiritual life, and then finally, step four, Adam, aka you, became a living soul, not before. And Christ, of course, is consistent with that since that's the Bible, a body you prepared for me. A body you have, past tense, prepared for me. I am not my body. Which is a really good thing because if you were your body when you die, you couldn't go to heaven. Your soul goes to heaven and you get a new body, 1 Corinthians 15. Your body is not human. It's a house. That's what David is saying in Psalm 139, if anybody would translate it rightly. Now, here's the question. Christ is the one speaking here. I can say a lot more about this verse than I'm going to say. But this is Christ talking. Everybody, you know, red letter Bible, when Jesus says something, it's more important. Okay, fine. Christ is talking here. A body... You prepared for me. So the me is not the body. The body was prepared prior. Yeah, nine months in a womb. It comes out of the womb. And then God, like he did to Adam, Genesis 2-7, breathes into the nostrils of the exited fetus the soul and the fetus draws its first breath because God gives it its first breath. That's all over the Old Testament. I may be dead before I finish covering all the verses that say that because they all say breath of life. In English the translation is usually breath of life. Do you know how many verses there are saying that? Yeah, you're not you until you're born. You're not you until you're breathing and the body is not you. And this is Jesus Christ saying it. Not a theologian, not your doctor so-and-so, Jesus Christ, directly, at birth, when he comes into the world, he says. There's no saying before he comes into the world. And the body is not him. That's why you're not evolved. Now, I don't know if it gets clearer than that, but here's the question for you to ponder. 3,300 years of Judeo-Christian history and the Bible all say abortion is not murder. And here's one reason why. The body is not you. The body's not human. It gets prepared and then at birth, God makes you. God makes you. I called you. I formed you. I made you. All over the Old Testament. So are the pro-lifers smarter than 3,300 freaking years of all the Jews and all the Christians who have lived prior to the late 1960s when the pro-lifers decided they wanted to drool over Caesar and spit on God? Are they smarter than Jesus Christ 
and 3,300 years of Judeo-Christian law that don't call abortion murder? Are they smarter than the Bible, which is the Word of God, the Word of this very same Jesus Christ, who never calls abortion murder? When Jesus Christ was down here for 33 years, did he ever say abortion is murder? No. What did he say? Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have, past tense, prepared for me. I am not my body. So abortion is not murder. Now what else do you know from this? Okay. What else do you know? Well, uh, if you, the real you is your soul and your immaterial, how do you go about proving that in a court of law? And if you can't, then guess what? It violates the separation of church and state to have any law pro or con or any funding pro or con abortion. That's the way it always was in the Bible. That's the way it's been in 3,300 years of Judeo-Christian law. And even to this day, you can ask the Roman Catholic Church yourself. They have never, ever made a law saying abortion is murder. It's the Prades who did that, starting in the mid-1970s. And so all of the Christians and all of the Jews and even Jesus Christ himself and even the Word of God itself are less holy, dumber, than the pro-lifers who are now drooling over Caesar and calling abortion murder. Think about it probably do more videos on the text later because there's a lot more here value.